You've seen him on Letterman and Leno. Next on Up Close, Mike Tyson's first opponent, Hurricane Peter McNeely, on his fight plan. The best way to approach Mike Tyson in the ring after he's taken such a long layoff is to get right on. Plus, he responds to those who have labeled him the Great White Hope. It doesn't matter whether I'm black, white, or purple, or what, what color he is. He's going to try and get me, and I'm going to try and get him. Hi, welcome to the show. Chris Myers here in Los Angeles. On August 19th, Mike Tyson's comeback in the ring begins when he fights 26-year-old Peter McNeely in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand on pay-per-view. McNeely, a 36-1 record and a boxing history in his family, joins us here on the program. Thanks for coming on, Peter. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. Why fight this fight? Why not? This is uh, the opportunity of a lifetime to be the... Uh, probably the most watched single sports media event of all times. Uh, it's a win-win situation. Well, why not? Uh, danger, safety, Tyson can hurt people. Yeah, yeah and, I might, and I might knock him off and foul up all the MGM and uh, Showtime's plans. How much have you watched Mike Tyson? I grew up watching Mike Tyson. Uh, you have a poster, right, uh, I, in your room? Or yeah. Since 89? Yeah, uh, we, we've got a big poster of Mike Tyson in the room. I you know, started watching Mike in 85, 86 when I was a senior in high school, and then right up when I was a freshman in college, I used to make the ride home from school just to catch the fights on HBO. And, uh, and now it's, you know, now, now it's uh, going to be Hurricane Peter McNeely versus Mike Tyson. Would you say you're more of an admirer of, uh, of Mike Tyson? Oh, I was, I was a very big admirer. Um, he was definitely a, a, a boxing hero to me, and uh, I, I never missed a fight. I, I've got a lot of his pre-title fights on tape. I've got all his title fights on tape, except for the, the Bone Hugger Smith fight. I erased that one. And I got a couple of the fights out, you know, his post-title fights on. And, uh, you know, I never would have thought, when I, when I started my amateur boxing career, I didn't win my first amateur fight until I was 19, and he'd already... He'd already won a second world's title when I had had my first amateur fight, so I never would have thought our paths were going were to cross like this. Are, are you fighting for the money? Is that part of it? <laughs> no, no. Uh, How much are you getting, by the way? What, what do you think you'll? I'm, I'm getting six hundred thousand. Okay. Will you take home that much? No, 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 no. This, you know, this is our team, team hurricane. So, what will you actually take home? What do you, what do you ballpark there? Uh, that's that's something that's got to be figured out later. Okay. So, you're right. so obviously the money but is, there, is. But this hasn't been a you know Peter McNeely hasn't been the sole operator of this train. I've I've got a terrific team behind me, Vinny Vecchioni, my manager, and uh, Cliff Cliff Fippen from the South Shore Boxing Club in Whitman, and a few other uh, sponsors and stragglers. So uh, you know it's a team effort. Uh, you said all right, so it's not the money, and, and you said why not? Is it uh, is is this your shot? I mean, you're you're ready for for this. To me, I think the most important thing is that this is a challenge. It's not even just Peter McNeely versus Mike Tyson. It's it's Peter McNeely versus Peter McNeely. Uh, How so? I, I've got to prove. I, I'm looking to prove something to myself. I'm not looking to prove anything to anybody else, but, but to myself. Are there better better ways to, to do that though than go up against one of the fiercest fighters, even though he's had the three and a half year layoff? Well, this has been a dream of mine since I was uh, probably about six or seven years old when I crawled up in the attic. When I was a kid, and uh, I knew my dad was a professional fighter, but I didn't know to what degree. And uh, when I found my dad on the cover of Ring Magazine and Sports Illustrated in his uh, world title fight program against Patterson, that was where the quest began. 1961, you talked to your father much about, about that fight? Um, in the past I did, and, I, and I've uh, gotten an opportunity of viewing the fight a few times on videotape. And, um, but not, not really too much uh, has been spoken lately. I'm kind of going my own way with this and doing it Peter, Peter McNeely style. Your grandfather actually fought in the Olympics in, in, in 28. My grandfather made the 1928 Olympic team. Uh, then in his first pro fight, he opened the Boston Garden in 1928. And your father, still, you communicate with him. Have you talked to him about this particular fight? Has he given you any advice? My dad uh, has always maintained through my whole career I, I had to prove to my dad that I wanted this. My dad never pushed me in the box. This has been all, this has been my dream. I never let the dream die. I, I was a fan and a wannabe from an early stage. Uh, I couldn't get close enough to a boxing gym, though, growing up in Medfield, Massachusetts. And it's an upper middle class to wealthy community. There was no boxing. So uh, I, I was always, uh, you know, after the flavor of boxing. So I tried to read the books and the magazines and watching it on the TV. 
And uh, I never let the dream die, and I finally was able to take it up when I was able to get on my own two feet in college and drive myself to a gym in a city somewhere. What do you think drew, drew you in to the sport? Well, I got my feet wet in boxing with just the basics. When I, My parents were split up when I was a kid, and one of my recreations, me and my little brother Snubby, we'd go on Saturday mornings with my dad overnight, and Saturday morning we'd go to a CYO program and, and uh, learn the basics of boxing. About two months out of the year on Saturday mornings, maybe we'd learn how to bite down a mouthpiece and stand up to our man. The thing got shut down after a short while, so that was where I got my feet wet, and I knew from that time that that what I wanted to do in life. I knew it was going to be my fate, my destiny someday to be a fighter. Any doubts along the way about maybe this isn't the right thing? Never. Not a one. Not a one. I've always wanted this. I believe that uh, my dad had four boys. I was named after his manager. As fate would have it, there was a 25% chance that one of them was going to be a fighter. As fate would have it, the one who was named after his manager, me, was the one who took up the opportunity. Why do you think you were chosen? For this fight and it is a big deal it's mike tyson's first and in fact people look at you as just a, a victim going into this but why were you why do you think you were chosen well me personally i i believe that uh because of my strong family heritage uh being a a, a white heavyweight and also my my large record i've got a 36 and one record with 30 ko's and i'm a, I'm a tremendous crowd pleaser uh i come right at you I got 30 knockouts. I got 21 first round knockouts. You knocked somebody out in six seconds. My last fight was a world record breaker. I knocked out uh, Frankie Hines in Hot Springs, Arkansas in six seconds. It's the fastest knockout in heavyweight history. All right, but if you weren't white, you don't think you would have been chosen? Uh, no, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that either, but I, I really believe it was the whole package. I'm an exciting fighter. I draw, I draw people to the seats. Um, I've, got a, I've got a fat record, and I've got a strong family history in boxing, so I think it's... It's been a, uh, the total package, uh, marketable on paper. He's getting ready for August 19th. We're with uh, Peter McNeely, who will, of course, be facing Mike Tyson at the MGM Grand. And when we come back on Up Close, we'll go more into the history, find out some of the mechanics of his boxing style and how that matches up with Mike Tyson and his comeback. Don't go away. Up Close is brought to you by FedEx. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, our most important package is yours and by Office Depot, taking care of business with guaranteed low prices on thousands of brand name office supplies. After three and a half years of prison will be that of our next guest. Say a prayer and welcome the Rodney Dangerfield of boxing, Hurricane Peter McNeely. Peter McDeal, a couple of weeks ago on uh, David Letterman, you've gained much notoriety from this, but it looks like people are poking fun. You comfortable with that? Uh, feed, you know, it, it feeds the faith and starves the doubt. Um, this, like I said, this has been a. Uh, I've, I've been dreaming of this my whole life, and uh, as far as monetary, you know, the things you asked me before about the monetary value of this, and the uh, the, the race issue. Uh, I've been dreaming of this for so long that I was so young that I didn't understand the value of a dollar, and I didn't understand uh, race issues between black and white. And um, I, be I really believe that when the bell rings, it doesn't matter whether I'm black, white, or purple, or what, what color he is, he's going to try and get me, and I'm going to try and get him. And that's the bottom line. But, but the hype beforehand appearing on a show like David Letterman had to be a kick. I mean, that's great exposure for your career no matter what happens in this fight. Th those, those are the extra perks uh, that, that come along with a fight like this that have been a lot of fun. Uh, but, you know, back home I was invited to a major concert and uh, I was given the opportunity to get up. They brought me up on stage and handed me the microphone in front of 20,000 people. So that and Letterman, I'd say, were my favorite uh, favorite opportunities that came my way. Uh, the Jay Leno program, The Tonight Show. Now, tell us the story about Julia Roberts backstage on the Letterman program. Well, uh, this, I guess this is my chance to clear the air on this. Uh, Michael Marley has seemed to made a big much to do about this uh, <laughs> Uh, really what happened was I was occupying the green room uh, waiting for my spot and, and uh, Julia was uh, kind of uh, hanging around on the show a little too long, it was taking up my time and somebody else's and uh, I, I, I was 
a little bit starstruck. I wanted to meet her, you know, just to say I met her. And, and uh, she's a beautiful woman and a great actress. So I, I, I uh, went up to her and I said hello when she was coming by. And I offered, to her, offered her an autograph picture of myself. <laughs> Did she know who you were? Did yeah, she, she said, she, she looked at me and she said, you, you're the guy. <laughs> I said, that's right, baby, I am. <laughs> and uh, she gave me a hug and a kiss and wished me luck. Is she coming uh, to the fight? Or? I, I have no idea. I didn't offer uh, tickets to the fight. Michael Marley might have uh, tried to boost my image, which is fine by me, but uh, the ticket prices are so expensive and people have been all over me at home for tickets that I, I'm not offering anybody anything except my family members. In fact, I guess it was $50 on pay-per-view, is it? Uh, you know, can you get the family a discount? If you can't catch it on the scene, get it on the screen, live on pay-per-view. <laughs> Tell me how you were selected. You talked about maybe why you thought, but you were supposed to fight Oliver McCall. Yeah, that was a, I'd say that was a great media training camp for me last fall. Um, I, signed a, I had the great opportunity to sign on with the greatest promoter the world has ever seen, uh, Don King. A uh, year ago, June, and uh, I, I you know, signed my four-year promotional deal with him, and right away things got better. Um, I got ranked in the world. Uh, my opponents got better. I knocked out a former world champion, and next thing you know, this past fall, I was uh, on the eve of fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world against Oliver McCall when he knocked off Lennox Lewis. And the next thing you know, one night I come home and I got a press conference going on at my house. So I got a lot of a lot of press out of that, a lot of attention and then no fight. So it was kind of like a good dry run to get me prepared. So then the second time around, my manager will tell you, I was a lot better uh, prepared for it. Is there a moral victory in this fight for you with Tyson? I'd say so. I de definitely would say that's true. Uh, uh, that's how you're talking about I'm, it. I'm getting, well, see, I, I've been getting, like like, Rod, like uh, David Letterman said, I'm, you know, a Rodney Dangerfield of boxing, getting no respect. So I uh, wouldn't lose or draw. Uh, I think I'm going to earn the respect of many. And, and that's important. So even if you don't win, you present yourself enough, you'll be happy with that. I want to, solidify, I want to solidify, solidify my place in the heavyweight division, and as well as, uh, first got to prove something to Peter McNeely. Secondly, got to prove something to the fight game and the fans. Have you met Mike Tyson? Once. And Once at the uh, initial announcement. And, uh, you know, they're trying, they're, they're kind of not really paying me too much attention. They think I'm just an opponent, uh, you know, the little, the little things. And, I, you know, my, my, the, on the poster, my picture's about this big, he's about this big, you know? So, uh, Do you, you sense know, he's treating you that way? Uh, I don't know if it's so much him or his managers around him or, uh, you know, other people involved in the promotion, but it really doesn't matter because when the bell rings, I'm going to have something to say. What's the best way to approach Mike Tyson in the ring? The best way to approach Mike Tyson in the ring after he's taken such a long layoff is to get right on him, back him up, bully him, do everything possible to break his concentration, which will possibly not be uh, all that strong anyways because uh, he's been out for four years and he's been out of prison a short time. And uh, I, don't think he, I think he's being pushed into this fight a little too quickly. You will lean on that layoff then. You're going to use that in your strategy. You got it. Now you're a body puncher. Is that is that going to be a tough guy to get in on? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm a great body puncher, but I'm I'm a good head puncher, and uh, I, I've got to I've got to believe that I've got to back him up and bully him and do whatever it takes. I've got to bang him to the body as well as to the head. Do you fear him at all? Uh, not in the least bit. Uh, I I fought a guy one time who was six foot ten, two hundred and eighty pounds. And I'd say mentally, that was the only fight I lost. I got, Busted open over the eye, I got 40 stitches. And I'd say mentally climbing into the ring, looking at that guy, made me made me prepared for anything in life. So you learned from that. I learned from that. You know, Mike Tyson's just a little guy. I, believe it or not, I'm probably going to outweigh him. <laughs> so intimidation, he will not have that working for him against you. No. All right, more with Peter McNeely up close from Los Angeles in a moment. Don't go away. Music Express, voted number one by the National Limousine Association, has offices in Los Angeles and on the East Coast. Music Express can handle your corporate needs anywhere in the U.S. and worldwide. And guests of Up Close stay at the Beverly Prescott, L.A.'s premier boutique hotel. Call your travel agent to make reservations at the Beverly Prescott, a Kimpton hotel.
Welcome back to the program. We're with Peter McNeely. Of course, August 19th, he goes up against uh, Mike Tyson. By the way, thanks for dressing up for the show. You know, we were talking about, and I kid because I care, we were talking about how much money you're going to make on the fight. they got to help you with wardrobe, although <laughs> tell me about the T-shirt. This, this is a new shirt that the guy that owns the South Shore Boxing Club, Cliff Fippen, made for me special, and I figured I might as well put it on today because it makes me look big. You can, you can see the muscles. You you called yourself a, uh, a big fish in a little pond, and now that's going to that's going to change. Yeah, well now it's you know now it's gotten on the national and worldwide hype, and uh, it's not just uh, in the Commonwealth and Medfield anymore. What's the greatest, largest crowd you fought in front of before? Wow, uh, geez, I'd say no more than three thousand. What kind of thoughts will race through your mind, or have you given any thought to what you might feel or think when you first step in the ring that night? Well, I'll tell you, Chris. Uh, you know, you go through a lot of the same similar feelings before fights, but you also get a lot of the different ones, too. And I, I think this fight, we're throwing everything out the window. It's kind of like the Thanksgiving Day football game. Throw the records <laughs> out the window. Uh, really, really, I'm, 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 for this fight, I'm, I'm walking underneath ladders. I'm letting black cats, you know, throwing all superstition out the window. This, this, this one's different. Different in that, for you, it's make or break? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. This is not a make-or-break situation. This is a win-win situation. But, but what uh, if you get in there, Peter, and, and the unthinkable, I mean, you were just talking about respect, but let's say you're the, the first-round victim here. Let's say Mike really really tears you up. Big, w big, will you ever get another shot, do you big, think? Big deal. Then, uh, then people can say, all right, uh, McNeely was green and ex inexperienced like we thought, and I, what, what? I, I lose the, possibly the greatest puncher of the modern era. Is he, in your opinion? I'd say so. Where does, it, where does he rank in terms of all-time heavyweights? Number one. <laughs> in your mind currently. Yeah, when I knock him off, then I'll be number one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the strategy a little bit. Well, certainly you're not short on confidence. We know that. In fighting a guy like Tyson, you said you looked at tape of him, you've, you've watched. Have you broken down certain things? And, and you're going back, remember what you're seeing is what he was before he went into prison. Exactly. And, uh, I think we're seeing a situation here very similar to uh, Muhammad Ali's situation back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Um, you know, of course, Muhammad Ali took uh, three and a half, four years off uh, from his stand against Vietnam. And, uh, you know, you couldn't touch Muhammad Ali in the 60s. Uh, the Muhammad Ali that came back in the 70s was a slightly larger, slightly slower uh, Muhammad Ali. And the other guys rose up and the fights became more competitive. I think we're going to see a very similar situation to that. And last check. Especially when they're taking me lightly. Um, I really believe they chose the wrong guy, and uh, I'm going to stand up to this guy. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm going right at him, and I'm going to look to back him up. Where, where, how, how many rounds do you have to go? What kind of fight do you have to fight, even if you don't win, to prove something to Peter well, McNeely? It's, it's scheduled for 10 rounds. Um, uh, if I can't get... I, I'm hot in the first round. i got 21 first-round knockouts. If I can't knock him out in the f first round or the first three rounds... I'd like to go the road. I'd like to go the whole ten with Mike Tyson. Say so ten rounds. Up. You've never gone more than eight rounds, no. right? Any of your pro nope. fights. Does that concern you a little bit? Not in the least bit. Like I said, this fight, uh, I'm throwing everything out the window on this fight. I'm gonna be so hyped up for this one. Uh, it's it's gonna be a bigger and better Hurricane Peter McNeely coming in. We are with uh, Hurricane and McNeely, and at last check, 25 to 1 the odds against Mike Tyson. That's about what they were when Buster Douglas did what he did. We'll talk no, about no, that no, fight. No. We'll be back in a moment. They're, they're, my odds are better. Higher? Better. Long better, shot? Better. He, 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 he had greater odds against him. I got better odds. All right, we'll be back with uh, Peter and his odds in a moment. Don't go away. <laughs> clothing provided by Renzi. Quite simply, the finest clothing experience for men. Remember, Renzi, we take your look seriously because we know you can't win if you're not even in the game. We're with Peter McNeely, born in Boston, Muhammad Ali, his hero and Big fan of the movie Raging Bull, and yeah, a college degree, political science from Bridgewater State College. We were talking about the odds of the fight. Now, you opened at the MGM Grand 30 to 1. It's down to 15, 16 to 1. Buster Douglas at one time, I guess, was 42 to 1. I, I was told he was 70 to 1, and, and that was only at one casino. The rest of the casinos, he was off the boards. So they weren't even taking action. Um, Did you bet on him, Buster I, Douglas? I, I, drove, I drove home from Bridgewater State College that night to see that fight because I knew... 
that he was going to do better than people were giving him credit for. I never thought he'd knock him out, but I knew he was going to do better than people were giving him credit for, so I, I knew enough to get home and watch it. So you saw that And play. I taped it. All right, you taped it. Have you looked at it again recently? Uh, no, no. Like I said, throwing everything out on this fight. I'm not watching films. Uh, I believe we we're probably going to see a different uh, Mike Tyson, and we're also going to see a different Hurricane Peter McNeely. But shouldn't it, wouldn't it be to your benefit to recall what happened in that fight from well, your underdog well, role here? Well, with all the media hype, I have seen some clips of the footage. I'm not going in and digging up the films, but I've seen some of the footage here and there. Um, and I believe that Mike Tyson is going to be a little sharper as far as his conditioning was for that fight. He was in poor condition for that fight, but his timing is going to be off because he hasn't fought in four years for this fight. So I think that, the, the, with the total package of, of his being off... And my being on, that made the odds a little closer. What you may have in the disrespect or underdog role, Tyson may have in the I'm out to get rid of all this anger, this this built-up hostility. Sure. You expect to see that, feel that, sense that? Of course that? I do. Uh, I've, uh, really, I've got nothing to lose in this fight. He's got, I've got everything to gain. He's got everything to lose. We're with Peter McNeely, and we'll ask him about why he doesn't like the Rocky comparisons. He almost was in a Rocky film. Up Close from Los Angeles continues in a moment. Don't go away. Travel provided by Continental, offering one pass, where you can earn free travel faster than any other frequent flyer program. If you call the home of Peter McNeely in Medfield, Mass, and he's not there to pick up the phone, this is what you'll hear. You reached Hurricane's Hotline, home of the WBA and WBC's world rated heavyweight contender, Hurricane Peter McNeely. I am Mike Tyson. I'm coming at you. Please leave a message, a phone number, and I'll try to get back to you later. You, uh, you do your own sound effects? You no, know, people have been trying to get me to change my sound effects. I said it's like Wayne's World. The minute you change it, it's going to die. It's good. Hurricane McNeely, and uh, you know you do return your calls. Proof of that, you returned ours. Yep. Let me ask you about the Rocky comparisons. Why don't you like that? You almost had the part in Rocky Five that went to Tommy Morris. Yeah, I came in second place behind Morris on that part. But this uh, really looks like a Rocky story, doesn't it? What's wrong with that? Well, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, just that, you know, I think that the general public... Uh, uh, they, they align themselves with Rocky because they've never either competed in boxing or seen boxing, so that's the only thing they can compare it to. But realistically, uh, from you know, if you're a boxer, I am everything that a, uh, the Rocky story is not. I'm a square peg in the fight game. I'm a white uh, kid who's college educated from a uh, wealthy suburban upper middle class community. I'm well managed, which Rocky Balboa was not. Uh, Burgess this, Meredith won't like this. This is this is a and this is a real life situation. It's not a fictional. Uh, character. Well, hopefully, uh, you'll have a happy ending. You sense though that most people are rooting for you. I put it this way. I tell you, even the people that don't think I can win want me to win. And any plans already made for after the fight? Well, uh, David Letterman invited me back. Win, lose, or draw. I'd like to give him his shot at me All right. after the fight, and uh, then I'm gonna. Uh, my mom's got a place down the Cape. Uh, all well, set for me for the week after the fight, so I think I'm going to spend some time. Uh, all right, well, we want to have you back, too. Either way, you're a lot of fun, and good all luck right. in the fight. Thanks Peter. a lot, Chris. All right, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Good right. luck to you. Peter McNeely, August 19th, we'll see him at the MGM Grand against Mike Tyson in Las Vegas. I'm Chris Myers here in Los Angeles. Thanks for watching Up Close. We'll see you later on. Take care.